conference muted. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is Judge Lopez. Today's May 17th. I'm going to call the 1 p.m. case, uh, which is Tehum. Uh, folks, I would remind everyone that those who wish to make an appearance today um, should also log into the courts uh, to the extent you have the access to the internet. Uh, please log into Southern District of Texas website, add your name there. If you go to my page, you will find a place to make Chapter 11 case appearances. You can do that. Uh, find a link to this case, just add your name, uh, and you will be recorded for purposes of making appearances. I've muted the entire line. Uh, I think everyone was entertained by some lovely background music there, but um, I'm going to mute the line. Um, if you wish to make an appearance or wish to speak, I'm going to ask that you please hit five star. But I'll take and start with appearances in the courtroom. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Jason Berkner from Gravy. We actually thought that was your walk-up music. Uh. <laughs> uh, with me in the courtroom are my colleagues Aaron Kaufman, Lydia Webb, Amber Carson. And we also have from Ankara our Chief Restructuring Officer, Russell Perry, and in-house counsel from Ankara, Michael Rusana. Okay. All righty. Good afternoon. Anyone else in the courtroom wish to make an appearance? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Nick Zalidiki for the Official Committee of Unsecured Creditors. I'm here with my partner, Zach Hemenway. All right. Good to see both of you. Yeah. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good Mike afternoon. Ham uh, from law firm Mahaffey Weber here on behalf of St. Alphonsus Health Alliance and St. Alphonsus Health System. And uh, my clients filed a joint objection to this proceeding along with St. Luke's. Yes. And their attorney, Mr. Glover, is online. Okay, great. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Howen for the U.S. trustee. I believe and Mr. Andrew Jimenez should be in one of those boxes on the screen. Ah, okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Good to see you. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Aaron Jones on behalf of Capital Region Medical Center and the curators of the University of Missouri. Ah, perfect. And I've got co-counsel um, on Good and Evil. Okay, great. Great. Good afternoon. Mr. Patterson, good afternoon. Good to see you. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Johnny Patterson on behalf of the RMSC plaintiffs. Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, let me open it up. If anyone wishes to make an appearance uh, at this point, and obviously, please hit five star. I'm, I'm muting a 214 number. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Christian Gluck on behalf of M2 Lunko. Okay. Good afternoon. And I'm unmuting a 210 number. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Mary Elizabeth Hurd on behalf of Ms. Edmo. Um, my co-counsel, I believe, is on the phone as well. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. The 206 number. Hey, good afternoon, Your Honor. I'm Brian Glover on behalf of St. Luke's. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Glover. Anyone else? Uh, here's a 248 area code. Two four eight area code. You wish to make an appearance? Sorry, yeah. Kenneth Dean here on behalf of the estate of Kerry Milkowitz. Okay, good afternoon. And a six three zero. Uh good afternoon, Your Honor. Scott Schaefer's on behalf of the Halo branded solutions. Okay. Unsecured creditor. Thank you. Okay. Um is there a representative from M2, either in the courtroom or on video? Mr. Glock? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay. Why don't we talk about mediation? That's where we're going to start today. So I saw something in papers, and I want to talk about that. So... Why don't we start there? Yeah, tell me about, I saw something and I saw a proposed order that was filed that was contemplating mediation. Why don't so, we start there? Sure. I don't uh, want to talk about the dip. I want to talk about the mediation. Your Honor, Aaron Kaufman for the debtor. Mm -hmm. um, last night we filed a proposed third interim order on the dip motion. Um, uh, I believe it has the. I just want to talk about mediation, Mr. Kaufman. Tell me what your thoughts are. 
in terms of what? What was contemplated by the mediation? What are you thinking about? Who do you, who do you have in mind and timing? So uh, the, the idea, we, I think the party has heard, Your Honor, loud and clear that this case is screaming for a global resolution. I think uh, the debtor certainly agrees that a global resolution uh, would save the estate some time and money. Uh, if we can get to a, a, an agreement, the debtor and the committee are both continuing their investigations. Uh, the dip order does extend the challenge period, so we can complete that. I only want to talk about Mr. Mr. Kaufman. Read me. Tell me, what do you have in mind with mediation? Timing, person, who's in it? The, the, the who would be the debtor of the committee. I mean, who would be your mediator? Oh, apologies. No, no, no. I'm not, I wasn't clear. Uh, the, the debtor was thinking perhaps Judge Jones, but we did we want we haven't fully conferred with the committee. Uh, we want to make sure the committee's on board with who we're thinking. Okay. That's why we've given ourselves a couple of weeks to talk this out and come back to your own. You're gonna we're making decisions today. So that one sounds fine to me. Okay. If he's willing to do it, and obviously you're gonna have to convince Judge Jones to do it. I like the who. Tell me the when. The the when would be sometime after the fourth of July holiday wanted to give parties time to finish their travels, uh, finish the discovery that is ongoing. The dip order does have a... I don't want to talk about the dip order. I just want to talk about timing. So mid-July. No one from M2 is here today, so we're not talking. I'll think about the dip in a minute. Okay. But I just want to talk. I like the who. Tell me the, the when. The when. Mid-July. Okay. Sometime in... Well, I got it. According... If you can get Joan, um, then sometime... I got it. Sometime in July, you're going to try to get this done, um, according to, and obviously subject to his avail, is agreeing to do it and availability. Okay. Who who would be involved in the mediation? I got it. The debtors in the committee and who else? And obviously, I'm too lone co. They'll show. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, at, there are a number of other parties. I think Paragrove 1018 was one of the parties contemplated. Who is that? So. In the org oh, it's one of the org structure. So okay. the ultimate, the, the direct owner of the debtor is an entity called Volatas Intermediate Holding. Mm -hmm. And then one layer up, I believe, is uh, uh, M2 Holdco. Mm -hmm. It might be uh, M2 Holdco Equity. There, there are a couple of uh, layers above Volatas Intermediate. But above, ultimately above that, the ultimate parent above that is an entity called Paragrove Penny. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Okay. So, and, and as uh, the committee discovered last week at a deposition, uh, Mr. Mr. Lefkowitz is a director. He's the sole director of the debtor, also director of M2 Holdco up the chain, and a director of Paragrove and a partial one of the one of many owners at that level. Uh, so, I would imagine Mr. Lefkowitz would participate in the deposition in, in the mediation. Um, and that's why the dip order contemplates one. I want to use the word dip. One or more representatives uh, representing those parties. Okay. Um, so that's the who. Anyone else? Oh, yes, care would also be a party. So all the kind of they're contemplated in the dip as well. I know you don't want to hear that. But that that's that's where we're focusing. What does the committee think? Your Honor, the committee agrees that this case screams for a global resolution, but there's two requirements to get there. One is we have to complete our investigation, so does the debtor. And the second is everybody has to come to the table. I can't make Yes Care mediate with me. I can't make Paragrove mediate with me. I just want you to talk to me and conceptually. So Conceptually, what we would envision is that the mediation take place with all of the parties against whom we believe the estate has claims. I think it should be broader. I think contemplating mediation, I don't think it should just be limited to the issues. I think I may be putting on more work to someone who's, you know, holding a trial and doing a first day in the middle of the trial. Um, if you can convince Judge Jones to mediate uh, and he's got the availability, I think it ought to be open to every, everyone. I I think if, 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 I'm not sure, I'm not, 
I think if there is a party that has litigation here, uh, I think they should have the right to have a, you know, so in other words, not one grand mediation, but a bunch of series of small mediations where if Judge Jones, he's going to have to obviously agree to this. Um, so I may get a call telling me what was I thinking, uh, but I, what, what I'm thinking is, you know, a lot of this should be stepped out fast. A lot of these issues can be step, stepped out really fast, and I, it seems to me that um, over the next 60 days, um, either there's a case or not, but I think a lot of this third-party litigation, I think an hour or two with Judge Jones, if he's willing to do it, would get rid of a lot of this. Uh, I think the parties, not get rid of it, that's the wrong way of thinking about it, but they could be resolved in a manner in which protects everyone's rights. Um, and a lot of this can be done by stipulation. Um, I saw the Edmo step. Um, and if the Department of Idaho, if Idaho is okay with it, um, I can sign that one. But it seems to me that in the next 60 days, we, we there either is a case or there's not, and it's just that simple. Um, and that's what I think everyone's rights. And I've, obviously, I've got the the hearing. I think in late June, where I'll decide a bunch of matters um, that we talked about. And I, sh I think I owe everyone an order that I've got to get out. I didn't realize they were going to be. I got hit with a number of first days, so I had to kind of get through those and. Um, and I'm going to jump on that this afternoon and get that out, and I'll decide those issues in the ordinary course. But it seems to me that we should find out if Judge Jones can mediate and agree to mediate, not just with, not just on the investigation of the issues, but with anyone who wants their day to, you know, to decide this issue in connection with the list day or someone, if if they're willing to, the committee, uh, the debtor, and that individual can have it, and it can happen over the next. 30 to 60 days, depending on what Jones Jones' schedule can be. So he can hold 10 short ones or one big one. I don't know I, if he's willing to do it. Um, but it seems to me that makes the most sense. And I don't know if any third parties, what their reaction to it is, but I think in the next 60 days there's either a case or there's not. And either there's going to be a deal after you complete your investigation or there's not. And then I think that that is going to have to make decisions about what it decides to do. But I don't want to have a robust conversation about a dip without the dip. The dip lender isn't even here and hasn't been here for the 75 days, and that's enough. So, you know, so I, I, if, if I'll take reactions from the parties, but... If, if what someone is asking me to do is preserve status quo for 60 days to see if a mediator can resolve a lot of this and the mediator agrees to it and it's, you know, Jones or Isco or something, um, I'm fine with that. If it's, it's not what the parties are contemplating um, and if M2 is asking for more, not going to happen today, uh, but I can preserve status quo, and I think, um, again, I don't know if Judge Jones will do this, but but it seems to me all of, every, either everything gets resolved um, through mediation or through some form of court proceeding in front of me, or it doesn't, but it seems to me, for example, like Mr. Patterson's client, that, that's, a, that's a step, and I know Mr. Patterson may, may disagree with me, but it seems to me that there is a resolution here to that, um, and that and that one should happen really fast. So, um, I, I know I probably took this in a direction that people weren't thinking, um, but that's where I'm. That's where my mind is, and I just need y'all to think about what I'm saying and. Y'all want to have a moment to think about it. If people have reactions to it, I'm more than happy to listen to it. 
either here or, or on the line. It has to be one of the people I needed. I thought that was our thinking music. Oh. Uh, <laughs> 630, it's you. 630, it is you. Where you are. Um, the, 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 yeah, I have a few minutes to talk about this internally or, or, or what's going on. I, I'm happy to, and maybe we can talk about how this this proceeds today. But I, I think, I think, quite frankly, um, Ms. Jim, I think your client, I mean, to, to me, that that is a that's a that's a short session waiting to happen, and, and that can be resolved in the next sixty days, and and preserving rights and. Um, I think, y'all you know, tell me what you, and, and like we say, we can't, well, he's in trial. I can't talk to him right now, but uh, I don't, what, what I don't want is either, I like the idea, I'm not going to force people to do it, but I like the idea, and if people are willing to do it, I'm willing to do this, but, but everyone has to understand that, you know, July 31 or whatever date it is, it's a hard date in my mind in terms of definitive action. And I think it goes in line with what the debtor was telling me at the beginning of the year, which to get on a pace to try to get out by the end of the year, it's it's putting it's it's requiring people to come to the table. You, you need to do your investigation, debtor needs to do its investigation, but 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 other parties need to come to the table. And if they don't come to the table, then this is the way to do it. If not, um, and, and, and they all have to be involved. Who All the parties that you listed have got to come to the table. If not, it, it doesn't make any sense, and we'll just have to figure out a different route. I'm willing to sign something that pushes this out for 60 days, and, I, and I, 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 someone's going to have to tell me whether that order just preserves status quo or if it does something different. If all it does is, in other words, if, we find, if you find out something new next week, it, the order doesn't cover it. So that's what I mean. We're preserving wherever things are as of the last time that I signed that order. So that's what I'm intending. Your Honor, if, if what you're so um, may I ask a couple of questions. Um, the first is: does your, Is your Honor envisioning a mediation of the stay issues separate and apart from the mediation of the exactly what I'm saying? Every in other words, everyone can join it. And so that would be an initial mediation of the stay issue. No, no, I think Judge Jones, if, if Judge Jones is willing to do it, it's like if the mediator um, is willing to do it, then I, I envision he or she will either do a, a, just a couple of them yeah. or a lot of them or one of them. I don't know. But I'm going to give them the flexibility to have individual one-offs because there are one-offs and perhaps – you know, they can have Edmo type steps or something uh, in in these situations, and and things can continue to move so that the thirty first just isn't a large, massive date. That's what I think. But again, we got to figure out basically if it's going to work or not. And so the the idea of doing several rounds of mediation or sessions of mediation on the stay issues would be separate and apart from a mediation or rounds of mediation after the debtor and the committee have completed this investigation so that we can mediate with him too and yes maybe him maybe, or, maybe yes maybe no I don't okay. know I I, think, I, I, in other words I would I just what I'm saying is that an outside date of the 31st and the parties can you know whenever it makes sense to have the global mediation about the big issues everybody can figure that out but if there are there, to me there are one-offs that can that can get that can get resolved very quickly as I see it, uh, and maybe that can happen. Quite frankly, the next two weeks. So, may I? Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> there's a cut. There's a few things that you may not be aware of. I'm, and, I'm sure that's the case. <laughs> so, and this is in no way meant, of course, to take issue with your honor. Oh. Or, okay. But, so, we have a bunch of insurance. Mm -hmm. The problem, if you will, is that not universally, but in the main, we have different policies across mm -hmm. the country, but in the main, the claims asserted exceed the available proceeds. Mm -hmm. and, and just to pick on Mr. Patterson for a minute, because he's an easy target and a friend, so I'll just pick on him. That policy, for example, the policy that 
if he was not, if his client was not, if his client was allowed to proceed and get a judgment, that policy, and my numbers may be a little off, there's like $8 million left on the policy or thereabouts, but there's like $18 million worth of claims. And so if Mr. Patterson's client hits on that policy and they hit a home run. In the next 60 days? No, I'm just talking generally speaking. That's all I'm saying, though. Either you got it, either you got something, you know, it sounds like Mr. Patterson, it sounds like you need to convince Mr. Patterson to join the mediation or a separate session. Well, that's what I'm saying, because if we're mediating these claims. I'm not saying mediating the claims. I'm just mediating the issues that are, in other words, I think. Because that's maybe where I'm confused. Maybe I'm not exactly following. No, maybe. In other words, either I'm going to let Mr. Patterson's clients go litigate or not, and maybe there ought to be guardrails to it. Maybe you can convince me that I shouldn't. Maybe your witness can do the job or not. I don't know. But it seems to me that I haven't made up my mind one way or the other as to what you all are going to do, and it seems to me that there could be ways, and I don't know what the mediator may want to take up. The mediator could take up settling the claim itself. The mediator can take up whether how things will play out in the next 60 days. I just think you all have flexibility there. That's what I'm saying. I don't think anything is really going to happen. I think things could happen in the next 60 days, and there could be really bad things that can happen. But I think within the next 60 days you can tell me whether you have a case or not. That's what I mean. What do you mean by a case? In other words, I don't know what the global deal is going to look like, but I think you've got 60 days to come. In other words, I have yet to see who the dip lender is. I have yet to know anything about the parents and what they're willing to do or not do in the case, and I think they've got to put their cards on the table in the next 60 days. Okay, and to that point, just so Your Honor understands, again, the parties that Mr. Kaufman ticked off, my understanding is they've all agreed to come to the mediation. So that's what I'm saying. That's a done deal. All we have to do is get in the room and figure out what the answer is with those parties. There's not any cajoling or convincing that has to happen to get them into the room. And it sounds like you've just got to convince Jones. We just have to. We understand anecdotally that he's probably willing to do it, but we do have to touch base with Chambers and find out when and all of that. I just think you've got a 60-day window to try to fit it in, and I don't know when your investigation ends, but it's got to happen within. It still looks like the dip had an outside date of July 31st. Actually, it goes a little beyond that. Your Honor, the proposed order kind of stretches things out, so we have July 31st or 14 days after when we complete the mediation. We started in mid-July, but it carries on. The idea is we don't want to prejudice the committee. Debtor doesn't want to be prejudiced. We want to keep that open so people aren't having to rush and file motions. I'm telling you July 31st. It sounds like a really good outside date to me, unless you all can really convince me. Jones can come in and convince me or someone. Is there somebody who can convince me that you need some more time? But that will be the date. Your Honor, assuming that we start getting the proverbial cards put on the table, that sounds perfectly reasonable. But as of now, I don't have the cards. They're not on the table. No, that's what I'm saying. And in terms of these issues, you know, I just think it ought to go broader. In other words, if Ms. Jones' client wants, you know, to see if she can work something out with the debtor, obviously the committee ought to be involved, and there's going to be public disclosure of it. But to me, to try to reach something that kind of then fits into a bigger puzzle, I think makes a lot of sense. And that's what I'm thinking. And maybe it's successful. Maybe it's not. That's where I'm going today. I think I agree with you. I don't have any cards, and I don't know. So I'm trying to think of a way to keep things moving and get me comfortable signing an order today. So, Your Honor, the one thing I will say is, unfortunately, in the next 30 to 60 days, one of the things that you likely will be seeing are discovery disputes from us because we're not getting information. Bring them. I'm just saying, like, it's just there's an outside window. And if you can convince somebody, if you can convince a mediator, one that everybody can agree to. I just don't want it. I just don't want to. I guess what I'm saying is I don't want to foreclose it because maybe 
the debtor wins big today, maybe the debtor doesn't. And I think it makes a lot of sense to just see if, if, if there's going to be a potential mediation, then, then it ought to be open to just the one issue today. Because I think, you know, decisions that could be made today one way or the other could affect. In other words, not debtor could win 60% of these, but if one of the debtor could lose on two or three of these. But from what you're telling me is if I pick the wrong two or three, then it could have a profound effect on the estate. That's what I need to kind of figure out. So that's why I'm saying maybe it makes sense for everyone to just kind of get in a room with someone who everybody respects, whoever that is. And I don't want to pick who it is, and I don't want to jam anyone. But you all know how to reach out to Chambers. Counsel? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Blake Hamp for St. Alphonsus. Uh, you had asked perhaps if any of the parties and actual defendants in this case had any mm -hmm. thoughts on, on the procedure. Number one, uh, Your Honor, with respect to your statement that the case should be resolved within the next 60 days or at least we know probably what's going to happen, St. Alphonsus absolutely agrees with that statement. Uh, with respect to mediation, uh, I, I obviously have to confer with my client, but uh, I believe they'd probably be very amenable to that, to see if something could be worked out, particularly because we're in an adversary proceeding and we haven't even had a Rule 26F conference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with regards to the mediator, Your Honor, uh, obviously Judge Jones is a fine mediator. We think there are other fine mediators as well. Mm -hmm. So just if Judge Jones is jammed up, I know he's jammed up because I just had a hearing tomorrow get thrown into the wind because he's jammed up. Uh, you know, I know there are other really good people right. who could handle it. Uh, Judge Felsenthal or somebody, there are lots mm -hmm. of them who could mm -hmm. handle this, I think, Your Honor. I think... Uh, I just wanted to say this, uh, with respect to our concerns, uh, St. Alphonsus's concerns, Judge, uh, with whether or not <clears throat> this case can be resolved in the next 60 days, St. Alphonsus's greatest concern is that the debtor is too conflicted to do that. Its sole director is Mr. Lefkowitz. Mr. Lefkowitz is also a director of every other party that would be at the mediation. We're concerned that that will make resolving this case fairly uh, to be a difficult proposition. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me let me ask. Is uh, of course. So I I, I I want to try to maybe reformulate a little bit, Your Honor. Just again, I'm just trying to work mm -hmm. through this. So what it sounds like you're really asking. I'm understanding you correctly, is effectively two mediation. One mediation to mediate this adversary proceeding and what we're going to do with the stay and how that all plays out and if people get stiffed or they don't or if there's a resolution. And the second is the more global mediation for the whole case, which involve two different sets of people but potentially the same mediator. Is that a fair characterization of what you're asking? I think it is, and, and I'll tell you why. Um, one, I think if, if I preserve the status quo today in terms of where everybody's knowledge is with respect to the dip and information that one knows about the dip lender, I think decisions, you know, I could make decisions today that could very well affect the viability of any future mediation today. So I'll have essentially made decisions today potentially. I haven't heard any evidence. I don't know which way it would go. But I could effectively affect or materially hamper the ability of any mediator to effectively resolve any global issues. So, so there could be a mediation to resolve the adversary and a mediation to, but they all have an outside date of 60 days. But within the 60 days, I think there are individuals within the adversary that can be easily resolved. Um, just like we do with Ms. Edmo, and there was it, it, I think there's a way. Ninth yes, Circuit case. I think there's a bunch of a couple of them, maybe not all, and that could be resolved with it before the what I would call grand bargain right. mediation, if there is to be one, and if there are discovery disputes along the way. I just think one way or the other, in 60 days, I've got to make a hard decision on A or B, but but they they almost have to kind of go in total today, but I can't extend anything else to the debt lender than other than preserving the status quo today. If they were looking for any other 
abilities, any rights, any other additional releases, relabors, whatever, everything is preserved today so that if someone finds something out later, the challenge, there's no additional challenge period. And I'm not saying anything bad about M2. What I am saying is just we're just preserving this. I want an outside date of July 31st. If you, you can resolve a few of the steps, it may make the 31st hearing a lot simpler one way or the other, or we can there's something on the table that everyone can look at, and maybe some folks like it, maybe some folks don't, but we'll know more. So from the debtor's perspective, Your Honor, we're in for that. If that's how Your Honor goes today, we're very happy with it. We'll take you up on that offer, and we'll execute appropriately to make sure we get done what we need to get done, outside of any discovery disputes that may exist between the committee and third parties or the debtor and other third parties. Those are just going to have to play themselves out. But insofar as this concept of two mediations with a grand bargain mediation later and the other ones stepping people in and out, you know, the debtor is very comfortable with that and we're, we're happy with it. I do want to make a comment in response to um, Mr. Ham's comment about the conflict issues. The debtor strongly disagrees with that. First of all, the debtor has an independent chief restructuring officer who is vested with all decision-making authority in this chapter of a case to the extent that there might be a conflict with the sole director. And you would, if we get to the testimony, I don't know if we're going to get there or not, one of the things you will hear or maybe would have heard from Mr. Perry is that, for example, in this adversary proceeding, he made all the decisions. This is all him. This is not other people whispering in his ear or anything like that. And so, you know, Mr. Lefkowitz is not my brother or my father, right? But I, I do have to take issue with this conflict situation, if you will, and the conflict allegation, because there are plenty of other people at all of the other different levels that can step in, and we're not going to have any conflict issues. And I'll also tell you that there is a desire to reach a global resolution, which is why I was able to tell Your Honor a few minutes ago that the people listed off by Mr. Kaufman are ready to come to the mediation table. And so I just wanted to be clear that we don't think there's a conflict issue. We take issue with that allegation, and we're going to make sure that everything is tied up in the neatest bow that it can be tied up in as soon as possible based on the parameters that Your Honor gives us. All right. Um, I agree that there could be other mediators. They threw out one name, and I just obviously agree with that name. Um, but. What I'm going to do, what I'm willing to do today is just extend everything out for till July 31st. And it's really not 60 days. It's really till July 31st to get everything done. But I'm going to give every party that wishes to have, and really the debtor needs to prepare a chart, right, quite frankly. for well, within, I'd say by Friday you got to pick a mediator. If John says he'll do it, um, Obviously, he may want to hear that I'm okay with the concept. If, if he's okay with it, you know, uh, everything I've proposed. If not, then we need to have an emergency hearing and kind of figure out what we're going to do differently. Um, then someone get an order by Friday. I sign the order, uh, you know, uh, appointing whoever it is as mediator. Um, if... If parties seek to resolve their issues through the mediation, and I'm not forcing anyone to do it, parties seek to mediate with whoever the mediator is, but it's going to be the same mediator. I don't want 10 different mediators. It's going to be whoever it is is going to have global knowledge because they're going to have to consider everything and the big and the small. Um, you know, I'm fine with parties stepping it out. I'm also fine with parties coming in and telling me this ain't working. Uh, and we got to do something different. So I'm completely open to that. But I assure everyone that, but, you know, I mean, hear me, like, July 31st isn't a fake date. It's it's entirely real, and there has to be something on the table. I'm telling this not because, not for the debtor, not for the committee, but for everyone else who may be listening to me that thinks that, you know, this is going to drag out. It's just not. Um, it just has to, there has to be something 
he passed forward, and maybe there's a, a ray of light. And I'm certainly not saying that everything has to be buttoned up, but within 60 days there has to be a global path. And not everybody has to agree with the path, but there has to be something on the table, right? I mean, the debtor could come up with something the committee may not may hate it, but there's something on the table that folks can agree or disagree with, like, not like. Um, and that's when. Um, I hope everyone's hearing me loud and clear on this. Um, just, you know, everybody's working really hard. It's just, it just, either there's something here or there's not. And, and someone's thinking about mediation as a way to do it, then I'm all, I'm all for it. If the parties are willing to do it. So, um, I still have rulings to do in June, uh, the hearings that I set. So I don't know if that impacts one way or the other, uh, this or not. I have to kind of go and compare, but I think the debtor needs to prepare a chart, whoever the mediator, and say, here are all the people who could potentially come knocking on your door. Um, here's all the, everything we know. Here are the potential, or, you know, here's an org chart. Here's a, here are the potential players. And, here are parties related to the adversary, and here are parties related to the global issue. And there could be overlap, obviously, and parties. Obviously, the committee would have to be involved in all of this. And everybody's going to get due process and rights. And anyway, those are my thoughts. There's a two. There's a two hundred five number here. Hold on. Let me just unmute there. Um, Good afternoon, Your Honor. I'm Val Early in Birmingham. Mr. Earl, yes. I apologize if, if I didn't. Uh, Quite all right. God. Thank you. I, I was trying to figure out if I had mashed the buttons the right way. <laughs> thank you for, oh, no. for hearing me. I, I believe I have heard you correctly. And if I have not, please excuse it to the, to the waverings of an old country lawyer. You said I'm not, Mr. Early. not a member of this AP. No, sir, I'm not. I'm being painfully honest. My client is not part of this AP. But to the extent that my client has a seat at any medi mediation table, we'd be delighted to talk. Is it my correct understanding that the so-called second global or final deal or whatever we're going to call it, mediation, would include people like my client who has currently pending a motion for relief from the state to proceed to trial against co-defendant non-debtors. Is that accurate? Mr. Ailey, I would make sure. Uh, I w let's see. You would make sure. No, no, no. I'm just looking at. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking at your claims. I'm just making sure that if, if what I'm saying would fit one way or the other. The alien. Yes, sir. Um, remind me who Mr. Ealing represents. The Tracy Grissom. She is a plaintiff in Alabama Middle, who has survived summary judgment and was six days away from trial. Against Corizon. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make sure that you. I don't. I will make the call and I will add you to that list. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, that Your Honor. You may have already been I in it, but I'll make sure and add you to that list. Absolutely. Your Honor, this is Mary Elizabeth Hurd on behalf of Ms. Edmo. Mm -hmm. uh, just two things I just wanted to, b before we forget about it here. Uh, we have two stipulations pending. One is in the um, adversary and one is in the main case. And I just, as an officer of the court, can represent to you that the Idaho Department of Corrections has signed off on those. Um, and we, I just wanted to make sure you knew there were two and that we were all in agreement. Can you and, just tell me which docket numbers they are? I just want to make sure. And then the, the Ms. Funk is here. I'm just going to get the head nod, and if that's the case, then I'll. Uh, 
Okay. While I'm looking for him, the, the other issue, Your Honor, is just that we we are have been resolved from the in the interim dip order that's been proposed and that will I imagine be in front of you shortly. The uh, but we do want to reserve our rights with regard to the final order. So I just mm-hmm. wanted to make sure mm-hmm. that we are a party to mm-hmm. whatever mediation. We wouldn't necessarily you know have to participate in the end if we can resolve our issues, but. We just don't want to be shut out from whatever mediation is addressing the dip and the global. Yeah, I, don't think mediation is, I don't think mediation is going to address the dip. I don't think mediation is going to address path forward. I think the debtor is still going to have to. The debtor wants to continue. I think the debtor is going to have to obviously file something, and everybody, you, all of your rights would be reserved with respect to the dip on a final basis. And I certainly don't mean to, infer, in, to impinge upon anyone on that. Okay, I just wanted to um, thank you for saying that because I wasn't completely sure. So thank you. No, I um, and I'm getting you the numbers right now. Um, Ms. Funk, can you just confirm that you're okay with the two staff? Uh, yes, Your Honor. For the record, Brenda Funk for the State of Idaho and Idaho Department of Corrections. We can confirm that the stipulation is filed as acceptable by the State of Idaho. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And, and I apologize. Um, I signed that one. I didn't realize. I, I should have given that a little bit more time and opportunity for everyone to review. So that, that's that's on me, and I apologize, but I'm glad that everything got corrected. You, you, Your Honor, Thank we you. just found them. It's number 567 in the main case Uh huh. and number 38 in the adversary. They're identical. It's the same stip. We just filed them in both places because we had orders in both. Okay, so 567 and 38. And they're both, and they're both the, even though they're docketed as just stipulation, we couldn't put the word amended in no, it. No, got it. On the piece of paper, it says amended. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Alonia, can, Thank you. Ms. Alonia, can we pull 5, 6, 7, and 38 and put them aside for me to be able to review and sign today? Okay. Um, July 31st is clear. Uh, August 1st is clear. Your Honor? Yeah. Um, I know that Your Honor said July 31st is a hard deadline, but I do have a family trip July 30th to August 2nd. Um, so no, no, I'm just, I mean, to get a... contemplating hearing. No, it's, well, I was contemplating a hearing, and that's, that's helpful to learn. I just mean, sounds like you only to then get a deal done by the 28th. Absolutely. Don't blame me if you don't, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not getting in the car if we have it. Uh, uh, oh. You said, what date? August 4th at 10 a.m. And so then we're going to have to move to 9 a.m. We'll figure out how to do that this afternoon. I'm going to have a... What is this? Oh, it's a pretty child. Okay. Um, July 18th at 10 a.m. I want to have a check-in and see what tentative, just status conference. I don't need to know specifics. I just need to know kind of we can check in and see where things are going. July 10th. Check-in on.
June 13th, 9 a.m. Here's a status conference. And Your Honor, what time was the check-in on July 10th? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. 9 a.m. on the June date. Uh, May. Mediation order picking. If we need to have a status conference on who that is. I know. Didn't I say 10 a.m.? And then there's a June date that I picked also. June uh, 13th at 9 a.m. I just, just, just I'm, it's a pencil. We don't need to necessarily have it, but if things are fluttering, I want to know about it. It's, I don't want to wait till the end. In other words, if the committee, I'm making something up. If the committee says folks aren't showing up and, you know, not everybody, what they've said, no one's showing up and I can't get everyone here or the, I want to know about it in June rather than middle of July. That's that's kind of it. But if everything is moving, then there's nothing to talk about. Or there could be a date where some steps could be presented. I'm just carving out a hearing date there. So if there were some stipulations that people wanted to present, you know, maybe that's a date that you can, you know, you've got and parties can have it and present it. Uh, uh, May, 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 May. By Monday, I should be entering a mediation order, appointing a mediator by Monday at the latest. Mr. Patterson. I guess up until just the last few minutes, I thought we were kind of discussing options, but now it sounds like this is what you're going to do. and That's what I'm going to do. And I'm I show up or I don't show up, it's up to me, and I don't show up, when do I get my hearing? Uh, wait, that August date is going forward no matter what. I'm, so not, I, I'm not moving it. So I, I don't get my hearing until August the 8th. That's, that's what's happening today. That's what's happening today. All right. Second piece. Well, I, I, well let me, with one caveat, Mr. Patterson, and that is, all right, if, there isn't a mediator. If you know this, this starts to flutter, and it starts to look like it's going to flutter in early June. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push up that date really fast, and everybody's, and you're, you're gonna, you'll have your date well before then. All right, and if I choose, I decide I'm not going. Mm -hmm. Can I file a notice and get a hearing? Maybe. I mean, I can try. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. I mean, I know you're going to read. No, 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 no. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out yeah. the process. That's exactly right. I think that's fair. Right. And it's not going to be with, it'll be my hearing mm -hmm. or maybe me and three others or I'll five consider others. It. Yeah, or I'll consider it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, second thing, there are a couple of conditions that I would hope that the court would consider okay. that might change my decision, my mm -hmm. client's decision. Mm -hmm. Um. Number one, there are what, five pages of insurance policies that we still have no information on. Now, I know what Mr. Bruckner tells you. Oh, Patterson's claim is capped with a $5 million insurance policy. Well, I don't know that. He hasn't given me that, and I'm not pointing my finger at Mr. Bruckner, the debtor, but he's an easy target as I am, right? I don't have that information. And when am I going to get this information? And when are all these litigation parties going to get this information oh, about yeah. the type of policy, mm -hmm. the amounts, what's left? Is there a cap? Is there overage? Is there an umbrella? We need to know because this makes a huge difference. And I just feel like we're being kept in the dark and trying to be pushed along going, you're just going to have to trust this, and this is why we're getting an extension. Not that I don't trust them, but let's right. let's get some information here. Right? Hold on. And, that, I, and I would like, I would like the court to make that a condition that the debtor will do this. Right? Number two, doesn't generally affect me, but it does. And the courts talked about 
not the court, but some of the parties have talked about this alleged conflict that Mr. Lefkowitz and Mr. Perry. Again, I'm looking for information, and I'm told Mr. Perry is the man in charge. He has all authority. I either want Mr. Perry to sign the schedules, because he didn't sign the schedules. He's the man in charge, but he didn't sign the schedules. Mr. Lefkowitz did. Or get Mr. Lefkowitz in here and let's talk to him. Let's get a 2004, and you give us as much time as we need with him, if he's the man with the knowledge. But they can't play one off of the other. They either have someone in charge that has this information, that's willing to swear to it without 15 pages of conditions and carve-outs and maybes. Sign a schedule like every other debtor does, because there's enough here now that it's making me a little concerned about who's saying what and where the real information is. And are they playing shuffleboard with the parties in order to minimize the hard questions? So my two requests that would go a long way in getting my clients are those two things. I know you stood up. I figured I didn't. Well, I think, Your Honor, respectfully to Mr. Patterson, he needs to ask me questions and not make accusations about failures to provide information when it's never been asked for, number one. Number two, it might make sense for Mr. Patterson to talk to his faraway counsel in New York, who's been in that case since it was filed five years ago, to find out what information that lawyer has. Number three, Mr. Patterson also knows very well what Rule 2004 provides and how to ask for a 2004 exam. So I just want that to be clear, which is everything that my friend over here just said has never been said before. So I just, so it's clear for you. That's correct. These things came up today, right? And I hope I didn't accuse you of anything. We still don't have insurance information. All I've gotten is what was told today. There's a $5 million cap and there's $8 million and $13 million. Mr. Patterson was going to wait to see if you could prove your case and see if you were going to put it on. And he should also know that the insurance company is defending on a reservation of rights. No, no, no. I guess that's why he didn't ask for it. He was going to see if you could prove your case and say he couldn't. I would have proved it today if we went forward. So we have insurance information? What I would say is this. It seems to me that a lot of what the parties have raised I'm well aware of. This is why I think some of this would make a lot of sense to just deal with. I think none of what I'm proposing should stop the information flow process. I think, quite frankly, I'm advocating for it. If someone needs insurance information, then I just think it should not be difficult to get. I get it. Someone has to ask for it. But to me, the flow of information should be relatively easy, obviously. But then we'll follow the rules and everybody should proceed. If somebody needs a 2004 exam, but I'm hoping, otherwise, before a lot of money is spent and everyone, there are 30, maybe a couple of hours with mediator, if we can find one that can do it, who I'm loading up. They don't even know they're being loaded up. To me, this makes a lot of sense, if that's the case. Your Honor, Lydia Webb of Gray Reed. As the mistress of the calendar, I'm now making my appearance to try to feel out exactly what Your Honor wants from us as far as scheduling goes. First, I want to make sure that I've confirmed the dates. And second, what exactly Your Honor is asking of the debtor as far as an order or? I don't think you need to do anything. I'll enter an order. I'll just continue today's hearing to that date, whatever date I set, the August date. August 4th at 10 a.m.? That sounds right. And Ms. Saldana will tell me if that date doesn't work. But I will confirm with the person who can affirm it, but pencil in that date. And then we will have the status conferences on the two dates that I pencil in. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Counsel. That concludes argument in this case.
kind of check in, and they could also be used if let's say why don't we I'm almost thinking about this like a like an omnibus hearing date, you know, where where if something needed to somebody had steps or someone wanted to just check in, we could talk about stuff or I could someone can ask me to, to sign things and they could be put on notice, but you know that those dates work, so you kinda of have them there. Maybe they're used, maybe they're not, maybe they tell me things are going wrong and I've got to adjust everything. That that's the way I'm thinking about this. Um and I I just need a mediator by Monday if this process is going to really work because I'm going to jam you and make you figure something out over the next couple of weeks. But every party that's listed on that dip wire, and if there's some that are need to be involved, it, it's got to it's got to make sense for whoever is supposed to be on there to show up. Uh, and that means, you know, I, what I don't want is for the middle of June the committee to tell me I still don't I still don't have information. Like that's just a in other words, everything should not be loaded before some grand mediation day. Uh, it should be a flea throwing information if this is going to really be fruitful. Um, Your Honor, at the appropriate time, I, I wanted to get back into the proposed dip order. And I know. You can't help yourself. You just cannot help yourself. No. I can't. Now, <laughs> and now may not be the right time, but I think it does fit into the schedule okay. pretty well. But I we, no, no, we no. can wait. No, no. Tell me. Tell me now. So the, the proposed interim dip order, to, uh, to your point, really does maintain the status quo. It pushes the challenge okay. period out, so no changes there. Um, it extends the milestone to enter a final dip order, and I've conferred with Mr. Gluck off the record. The, uh, the dip lender would agree to continue the milestone out to a final hearing, uh, and we would propose to put it at August 4th um, to kind of keep things out. Why don't we keep it? August 10th, just in case that date doesn't work. It's just a, an outside date. Okay, August 10th. I don't know. If, wait, make sure I didn't just give you a Saturday. Nope, August 10th is a Thursday. I'm just using that as an outside date, uh, just in case the 4th. I don't know. Things come up, and I just don't want to have a hearing to just push the date out. In paragraph 3, of the proposed dip order, this is at docket 573. There, there are some conditions in the dip order that uh, the committee was contemplating for a mediation. One was attendance by the, all the parties. Um, two was uh, substantial production of the outstanding request. But three, there was, there was, there would be an omnibus hearing on discovery disputes. We had pinned June 16th, but I think it would work to put that on the June 13th check-in hearing. Uh. Yeah, I mean, you can, let's see, June 16th. No, 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 June 16th, I've got, that date is now gone. And I gave it yesterday. Yeah, I, in fairness, I don't think we had conferred with Ms. Saldana. No, 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 yeah, no, no, no. I just, I, the reason, the, the 13th, the reason I picked the 13th, the, the 16th, I've got uh, uh, the afternoon and vision health just took it. Uh, uh, that was like on Monday or so, um, so. But what we would propose to do is put the omnibus discovery date on the 13th. Instead. Yeah, but really what you're hearing out of me is if you can always come in sooner than that too. And I, seriously, this, this really has to kind of really move and I'm not, but don't come in here. This is a, so let it go, you're a, you're a pro. I mean, come in sooner if you really have to. If not, then let's just wait to the 13th. But. If there's a real problem, then you know you can always come in sooner than that. Understood. Thank you. I can I can type that in. I can type in that that tweet. Celine, you better have been taking good notes to see what dates I said. That's the clerk value add. Um, all righty, folks. Thank you. Have a good day.